Hello everyone, welcome to MP. In this video tutorial series, I show you how to write books and technical reports in LaTeX. So, with no further delays, let's get started. In this video, I will be discussing LaTeX class files. A class file is a file which contains several commands that sets the structuring of your document and the format and layout of the pages. Your LaTeX distribution which in my case is MicTech, comes bundled with several standard class files, one of which is the report class. In tutorial 2, where we created this document, we loaded the report class file using the document class command. As a result, our document has the format as specified by the basic standard report class. Now we are going to create our own class file. To do that, we simply click New and then we can start writing our code. But first, I will save this file in the same folder where our main TEX file is located. Remember that a class file has to be saved in the same directory as its TEX file. I will name the class file Report Class and we need to add the CLS extension which is the class file extension. Click save and see the class file created in the folder. A class file always starts with the needs tech format command. In the curly brackets, we type in the parameter latex2e. The needs tech format command tells the compiler which version of latex the class is for. The current version of latex is LaTeX 2E. Notice that the needs tech format command contains both lowercase and uppercase letters. In LaTeX, commands are case sensitive, so if you type a lowercase letter where there should be an uppercase letter, or vice versa, the compiler will not recognize the command and you will get error messages. The second command required for a class file is the provides class command. This command gives the compiler some information about your class. In the curly brackets, we type in the parameter report class. This parameter should always match the name of your class file and it tells LaTeX what your class is called. The third command we can add in our class file is the load class command. In the curly brackets, the parameter we type in there is the name of the class we want to load. Since this class I'm creating now is based on the report class, I want the parameter to be report. The load class command loads all the commands and styles defined in the specified class into your own custom class file. Now as a result of loading the standard report class into my own custom class file and not having any further commands added to my class file, my class file is now exactly the same as the basic standard report class. So if we go to the main TEX file and we replace report with report class here at the document class command, we will get exactly the same document when we recompile it. Now at the document class command in the main TEX file, I inserted this value in square brackets. The first parameter in square brackets specifies some options for the class being loaded for your document. The only option I specified was 12 point text size. We can remove this first parameter from the document class command in the main TEX file and instead add it to the load class command in the class file. This will achieve the same result and further simplify our main TEX file. We can also load packages from within class files. All these packages I loaded in my main TEX file, I will instead load from within the class file because that will greatly simplify our main TEX file. The only difference between loading a package in the TEX file and loading it in a class file is that a different command is used. 
When we load a package in a TEX file, we need to use the use package command. But if we load a package in a class file, we need to use the require package command. Now you can see that the preamble of our main TEX file has greatly been simplified. In fact, it only contains one command at this stage, which is the document class command used to load our class file. So in essence, what we have done is we took all the code that we would have otherwise put in the preamble and instead put it into our class file to simplify our main TEX file. We can add an additional parameter to the provide class command in the class file. This second parameter is optional and it provides a description of your class which will appear in the log among other places. The description must begin with a date. After the date we can add a title that gives a description of our class file. My title will be technical report since this class file will be used for the creation of technical reports. Just take note that the format of the date is year forward slash month forward slash day. Also remember that the second parameter containing your description must be in square brackets. The date that you enter into your description should be the date on which you most recently modified your class file. This can be used to check that you have the most recent version of your class file. This can be handy when you frequently modify your class file or if you are part of a team of people which frequently modifies the class file. In our main TEX file, we also add a second parameter at the document class command in square brackets. This parameter will only consist of a date and the date you enter there is the date when your class file was most recently modified. Now if the date in our class file does not match the date in our TEX file, our code will be compiled normally and our document will be built without any problems. However, in the log we will see a warning message saying that the two dates do not match. So just keep an eye out for this and make sure that the two dates always match one another. Now I want to further reduce the complexity of my main TEX file. So where we took the code from our preamble and put it into our class file to simplify our preamble, we can now follow the same concept with chapters. Since I have five chapters in my current document, I will create five different TEX files. I will name them chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4 and chapter 5. Remember that these files are all TEX files, which is the same file type as our main TEX file. Then I will put all of chapter 1's content into the chapter 1 TEX file, chapter 2's content into the chapter 2 TEX file, and I do the same for chapters 3, 4 and 5. Then I just save all 5 of these newly created TEX files. I prefer to save all these files in the root directory, which is the directory where my main TEX file is saved. In our main TEX file, we use the input command to load our newly created TEX files. The parameter in curly brackets is the directory of the file. This dot at the beginning, where we enter the directory path, just refers to the root directory. But if our files are saved in a completely different directory, we will have to enter the full path. What this input command essentially does is it takes all the content inside of the file and loads it into your main TEX file as if all the code was directly entered into your main TEX file. But splitting your work into several files like this greatly reduces complexity and confusion. Now if we compile our main TEX file our document will still be exactly the same because we didn't change any of the code that make up the content of our document. We just moved it around between different files. 
Now, the actual content of my work are in the separate files and the main TEX file and the class file I loaded into it is mostly responsible for the formatting of my document. Something that you should not forget is that you can only compile your main TEX file. Currently, we have several tabs open, each a separate file. We have our five chapter TEX files, we have our class file and we have our main TEX file opened. You cannot compile any one of your chapter files or your class file. If you try to do that, you just get an error message since they do not contain the necessary code to result in a successful compilation. I often accidentally try to compile either my class file or one of my chapter files. This happens when I'm so preoccupied working on those files that I too hastily click the build button. So if you accidentally do that, don't feel bad, it happens to all of us. Something you can take notice of for now is the standard report class. If you go to the directory where your LaTeX distribution is installed, in my case it is in program files, you can find the report class file there. In the search bar, just type in report and it will display the standard report class file there among some other files. If you open the file, you can observe some of its code. The beginning is just commented descriptions, but then as you scroll down, you will see that the first two lines of actual code is also the needs tech format and provides class commands. In time, you will learn about these commands and instructions you see here. So later when you are familiar with everything, you will be able to just copy this code directly into your own class file and modify it to suit your needs. But for now, we just load these commands and instructions into our own class file using the load class command. Now, in this tutorial series, I teach you how to write scientific reports and books. Right now, I only have a report TEX file and the report class file. So I will also quickly create a book TEX file and a book class file. I'm quickly creating the main TEX file called book. This will be quick because I just copy the code that I already have from my report TEX file. And I also create a class file which I will call book class. With this class file, I also just copy the code from the reports class file. Some things that I need to change in my books class file is here at the provides class command, I change the first parameter to book class, since that's the name of the class file. And at the second parameter, instead of having the description as technical report, I'm just changing it to technical book. Then at the load class command, I want to load the basic standard book class instead of the standard report class. And here in the book TEX file at the document class command, we change the first parameter to book class, which is our own custom class we just created for our book. Also in books, there are generally not lists of figures or lists of tables. So I will take out the list of figures and list of tables commands. We are still using the same five chapter files in both our report file and our book file. The only difference between our report and book documents is the formatting. The actual content in the report and book documents for these tutorials will be mostly the same. So that's it for this tutorial. I provide all the code of this tutorial in a link in the description below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.